Welcome to uh, our deep dive into Portuguese science communication. Yeah. We're going to be digging into this blog I found called Ciencia Natural. Oh, I know that blog. It's fantastic. It's not your, like, you know, typical science news and dry research. This is different. Yeah, definitely not your average science blog. And, you know, one of the things that really caught my eye was this idea of finding fossils in the middle of the city. They call it urban geology. Right. Have you ever seen that? Like just walking around a city and bam, yeah. there's a fossil. You never even occurred to me. I mean, I always think of fossils being in, you know, museums or like out in a dig somewhere. Exactly. But this blog points out that they're all around us, embedded in the walls of buildings, churches. Churches, really. Yeah, they even have this whole post about these walking tours you can do. Imagine that urban fossil hunting. And they tell this incredible story about... Um, a soldier's grave marked by ammonite fossils. They call it a, a share between beings of different species in different times. Wow, that's, uh, that's pretty profound. So we've got ancient fossils in our cities, but this blog goes even further. They've got posts about community science projects. Like this one about abandoned quarries really got me thinking. Oh, yeah, those quarries are fascinating. And the author of this blog was like on a mission to get people to vote for this project through something called or Cemento Participativo Portugal. Or Cemento what? It means participatory budgeting, basically giving citizens a say in how some of their tax money gets spent on stuff, including science projects. That's actually kind of cool. I mean, abandoned quarries aren't usually at the top of everyone's, like, list of exciting topics. No, not really. But this author, they were so passionate about it. They really wanted to document the history of these quarries, the geology, the economics, everything. It's a really interesting way to connect with your local community, you know, digging into the past like that. Totally. And they even talked about turning these quarries into, like, educational tourist attractions. Okay, but then Sciencia Natural takes this sharp turn. One minute it's quarries, the next it's robots taking over the world, and then Nick Cave's Higgs boson blues. Oh, yeah. It's such a cool mix. You know, they really get that science isn't just about labs and textbooks. It's part of everything. It's in our music. It's in art. Exactly. They blend it all together seamlessly. And it's like they find a way to connect science to, well, pretty much anything. Like there's this story about a taxi driver. Oh, yeah, the taxi driver. That's one of my favorites from the blog, actually. What is it about those everyday encounters? I know, right? It's so relatable. <laughs> so the author was talking about stargazing apps on their phone, you know, and how much they loved using them. And then it turns out that taxi driver overheard and was totally fascinated. No way. Really? Yeah. He was like totally engrossed. <laughs> started asking all these questions about like double stars and galaxies. Oh, I love that. You just never know who's going to get like sparked by something. Totally. And that actually reminds me of another post from Scientia Natural. It's about the importance of answering those big questions. You mean like the meaning of life and all that? Well, not quite that deep. More like the kind of questions kids ask. Oh, right. Like, why is the sky blue? Exactly. Except in this case, it was about evolution. The author was talking about this children's book. It's called Trocado por Mioros. Trocado por, what does that mean again? It means exchange for little ones. Oh, uh, that's cute. So it's like explaining big ideas to kids. Yeah, the book has all these experts answering questions from kids on different topics. Yeah. And, you know, even for experts, explaining something like evolution in a way that a child can grasp. It's not easy. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. Especially something like, I don't know, how the eye evolved. Exactly. That's actually one of the questions the author talks about tackling in the blog post. Like, how do you even begin to explain that to a kid? Right. Without overwhelming them. And without, you know, dumbing it down too much either. You want to be accurate, but also keep them engaged. It's a real challenge. It's really amazing when you think about it. It is. How this blog finds science in everything yeah. from, like you are saying, fossils to music, taxi drivers. It really makes you realize, like... It's kind of everywhere when you start to, like, open your eyes to it. It is. It's all around us. You don't have to be in a lab or reading a textbook to, like, really no. experience the the wonder of it all, I guess. Yeah, and I think that's what Science Natural does so well. Yeah. It's like they're they're showing us how all these pieces connect it's not just about the facts it's about yeah. the passion and the stories and that like human element of science and how those stories make you look at the world a little differently like even just walking down the street maybe i will see some fossils who knows you might be surprised maybe i'll strike up a conversation about the cosmos with my next uber driver there you go you never know so i guess what we're saying is keep those eyes peeled and those questions coming absolutely never stop asking why 
This has been a really fun deep dive. Definitely makes you think. It have. Where can people find this blog again? Just search Cyan AO Natural. You'll find it. Perfect. And let us know if you find any fossils in your city. Please do. Until next time. Thank you.